In order to understand duality and a duality consciousness, we have to first look at who we are, what kind of beings we are, where we came from, and why we're here, why we were even brought into being. And um, I remember when I was 19 years old, I took this four months meditation course in Switzerland. And the last month of it was uh, focused on Vedic teachings. We also did some special meditation techniques. And one of the things they talked about was that there was something, an energy, higher energy called Soma, which can stream through our energy field and you can feel it as a sense of something dripping in the back of your mouth. And I had that the entire month. And I had, we did some special meditation techniques. I had so many non-dual experiences that it almost blew my mind. I was completely spaced out. And it was an enormous shock to come back to real life after this experience. So I understand why there are many people who have these uh, non-dual experiences who are shocked by it, who feel that uh, their lives are changed, they experience a state of almost like no self and they don't know what to do with themselves. So I, I understand this very well because I would say looking back at this that I was in depression for three or four years after that experience because I didn't know how to deal with this. And part of the reason why I, or actually the main reason why I didn't know how to deal with it was that the experiences I had were, seemed very real. But the explanation I had about these experiences was in this context of the Vedas. And quite frankly, the, the Eastern teachings, they talk about these immense cosmic cycles. And I'm paraphrasing because it's a long time ago, but the basic idea is that there are these immense cosmic cycles, and there's this Brahman, which is the undifferentiated consciousness, and out of Brahman comes the world, and out of Brahman comes these beings like us, and we go through a myriad of incarnations over billions of years, and we often suffer immensely like people suffer on earth, and then we come to a point where we become spiritually interested and now we have to forsake the world and go back and reunite with Brahman and then we disappear as individuals. That was the understanding I got out of this course, is that we have all of this striving, we go through all of these experiences, only in the end to just disappear, cease to exist. The self is dissolved into the Atman. The individual self is dissolved into the Atman, which is the uh, eternal, unchanging self. So, the reason why this put me in a state of depression was that it didn't resonate with me. In fact, it, <laughs> it did the opposite of resonate, because I knew intuitively there's something wrong here. There's something fundamentally wrong. It doesn't vibrate right that this is the only purpose of creation that I go through all of this suffering only to disappear. I mean, does this idea, does that really motivate anybody? I look at some of these people who talk about non-duality, you know, and they talk about these kind of ideas, that the loss of self, and some say you don't actually exist, it's just an illusion, and you're meant to awaken from this. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what they think is gonna happen after you awaken. I mean, an awakened person, when the body dies, what happens to it? I haven't really been able to find anybody who will clearly state this, but it seems to me that that person just ceases to exist, that that person just disappears. What's the point of becoming enlightened then, if you just cease to exist? So anyway, these were some of the questions I had back then, which is now, what, 45 years ago? And I couldn't resolve them in my mind. I just didn't have the experience, the uh, discernment, to, to see what was real and unreal in the whole thing. So I was totally confused, and if there was no purpose with creation, why was I striving? So what is the point in striving for anything? was how I felt. And it really didn't uh, get resolved for me until after probably three or four years, I found the teachings of the Ascended Masters. Because the Ascended Masters have, a, a in a way, a similar uh, view of how the world was created, but they have a different slant on it. And the idea is that 
uh, the world is not created with no purpose, and we are not created with no purpose. In fact, according to the Ascended Masters, if you condense their teachings, the world is an educational institution for us. In other words, the, the world is just an environment in which we can do two things. We can have experiences of the world, but we can also experiment with our co-creative abilities. In other words, the Ascended Masters are saying that ultimately there was one being, you can call it Brahman or the Creator, who created the world, who started the process of creating the world. We are part of that process. We are extensions. We are the latest extensions of that process. A very long process going through many steps, which I actually explain in one of my uh, videos called How the World Was Created. And you can look at that video and there's a more of a description of the process. But the idea is we are part of the creative process and we are created to be co-creators so that when we are in embodiment on Earth, for example, we have the ability to build on the foundation created by the Ascended Masters. The Ascended Masters created the Earth in its original design. And we as human beings, we were sent here to embody here to be co-creators to build on the foundation set by the Ascended Masters. And we have, as I also explained in the video, two options. We can build onto that foundation or we can tear down on that foundation. We can go up or we can go down. And what has happened on Earth, which started a long time ago, is that humankind has gone below the original uh, level that the Earth was created at. They have gone into a lower state of consciousness, and this is what I also explained, the duality consciousness. So people have gone into duality and therefore have taken the world down to a lower level than what was originally created. And that's why we see ourselves as separate beings who are separated from our source. We don't see any purpose to life. And we have created, of course, all of the conflicts. But we have done much more. We have created poverty, we have created the density of matter, a lot of things that I explain in the other videos. But the important point that I want to get to in terms of non-duality is there are some of these teachings on non-duality that say that our basic nature is non-dual. We are non-dual beings. And that's both correct and not correct. You have to be very, very careful here. Yes, ultimately our source is Brahman or the Creator, because there's only one consciousness. But we are not the fullness of the Creator's consciousness. We are finite beings, and we were not created with the fullness of the Creator's consciousness. So the goal of spirituality is not to come to a point where now we re-remember or reawaken to who we are, and therefore instantly we are awakened and we are now the fullness of the Creator's consciousness. That's not a realistic scenario, because there is an immense difference between the level of consciousness we can have on a planet like Earth and the Creator consciousness. It's just, uh, the Creator consciousness is infinite, ours is finite. It's a huge gap. It can be, <laughs> we can overcome that gap, but only by going through many different levels of creation, working our way up to higher and higher levels of consciousness. It, it's not an instant process. We cannot awaken instantly from the consciousness we have on Earth to the Creator Consciousness. And the reason for this is that we were not created with the fullness of the Creator's Consciousness. We were created with a finite, localized sense of self. We can say, you know, modern science talks about the Big Bang, there was a singularity. We can say that our consciousness, when we first came into being, was a singularity. It was very localized. I've used the image before. Imagine you are standing in this immense flat plane, and you have a little flashlight. And the flashlight lights up a little circle around you. And that's all you can see. The rest is just darkness. So this is how we, we start out. But we don't start out as separate beings, because we have an intuitive sense that we are connected some, to something beyond our own minds. And this is crucial to grasp this. 
because we have basically two options as a new co-creator who was who just came into being. You have two options. You can you can focus your attention on the fact that you are connected, that you have this sense of connection, and you can start exploring what does that mean? What am I connected to? What is it that's outside our own mind? What is there to understand about the world that I don't understand? And then you can put yourself on what is the real spiritual path. We are seeking to raise your level of awareness, you are seeking to expand your sense of self, so you see more and more. You, you experience more and more of the world and how it works. This isn't just a matter of being taught, it's also a matter of experimenting with your co-creative abilities. And how do you co-create? You co-create through the powers of the mind. In other words, you formulate an image in your mind. I've explained this in several of my other videos. You have we have four levels of the mind. There's a physical mind, the emotional, mental, and identity mind. So we start in the identity mind, formulate an image of one we want to co-create in the environment we're in, make it more concrete in the physical, give it energy in the emotional, and then we send it into out of, from the mind into the cosmic mirror, and the cosmic mirror will uh, reflect it back to us. So when we, when we see what comes back to us in the form of physical circumstances, we can then say, how can I refine what I send out so I can get something better back? And this is co-creation. This is an experimental process. And our one option is to explore this. What does it mean that we are connected beings? What are we connected to? And this is how we gradually raise our consciousness up from our starting level. But the other option is, we can go below our starting level. But the only way to go below our starting level is to go into this illusion that we are separate beings. And I say it's an illusion because we will always be connected. We're always part of the whole. We always came from the same source. But when we go into this lower state of consciousness, we forget that we are connected to something. We see ourselves as separate beings. What happens when we do this, which I also explain in more detail in some of my other videos, is that we feel a sense of loss. We feel that we're incomplete. As soon as we step into this consciousness of separation, we feel incomplete. And this is unbearable for us. We can't stand it. But if we are not willing to go back to seeing ourselves as connected beings, which we can do at any time, then we have to justify why we stay in separation. And in order to justify how we stay in separation, we use the duality consciousness. And I've explained this in How the World Works videos, uh, how the mind can become a closed self-referential system. And that is essentially what happens when we step into this, uh, where we use the duality consciousness. See, what we do when we step into duality, we are defining in our minds how we think the universe should work. So you see, we have these two options. When we see ourselves as a connected being, we acknowledge that I'm standing in this big dark room, I have this little flashlight, there's a limit to what I can see. There is more to know about how the world works than what I can see with my present level of consciousness. So therefore, I am willing to raise my level of consciousness. When we go into duality, we're not willing to raise our level of consciousness and therefore, we come to believe that with our present level of consciousness as separate beings, we can define how the world should work. This is the duality consciousness. Now, everything in the duality consciousness is an illusion. Everything is an illusion. This may you know, be very provocative to some people. I've had some people get very angry when I say this, because they say, but there's got to be something that's real. I have studied this spiritual teaching for 30 years, and it's a very high spiritual teaching that comes from these enlightened beings. How can you say this teaching isn't real? Well, everything in the duality consciousness is an illusion. That means when you find a spiritual teaching, the spiritual teaching might have some very valid ideas. Modern science has made some valid discoveries. But you're not seeing 
what the teaching is saying or what science is saying. You are seeing everything through the filter of this duality consciousness. And everything you see through that filter is an illusion. Now, I know you can come up with a lot of objections to this. You can say, well, the world is round. We know this. At least most people accept this. Are you saying this is an illusion? Well, what do you do with this in your mind? How, what kind of a world view have you created in your mind? It may be that this world view has some valid enough observations, the world is round, but is the world view itself accurate? Is this the highest possible? And this is my point. When you go into duality, you can take individual statements, individual knowledge, and you can say, yes, these individual ideas are accurate enough, but the whole that you create, the worldview you create in your mind, is still an illusion. Why? Because that worldview portrays you as a separate being. First of all, you see yourself as separate from your environment. Okay, planet Earth is different from me. You see yourself as separated from other people. These other people don't do what I want. They are separate from me. But most importantly, you see yourself as separate from your source. Whether you call this God or Brahman or whatever. And so what is it that has happened over time here? It is that people have taken the duality consciousness. They have looked at how the world is. They have interpreted what they see in the world through the duality consciousness. Then they have created mental images and projected them upon God or ultimate reality. A typical example is the Old Testament God, the angry man in the sky. So you have a patriarchal society. People are angry, people are judgmental, people are unforgiving. And what do they do? Well, it says in the Bible, let's make man after our own image of likeness. But what has happened is that after humankind stepped into duality, they have made gods in their own image and after their own likeness. So they've created gods that have human qualities. And that's what you see in the personal God of the Old Testament. But this isn't all. What we do when we're in the duality consciousness is we look at everything through that filter and we project these mental images we create in our minds upon everything, upon ultimate reality. And that is also what people do when they hear about the concept of non-duality. You can find teachings out there that give you a dualistic perspective on non-duality. And that's why I say that non-duality is the most challenging concept for us human beings. Nothing is more challenging than this, because it requires us to overcome this dualistic worldview that we have not only been brought up with in this lifetime, but that we have created over many previous lifetimes. It's very ingrained in our consciousness. And that's why you can say, it just isn't realistic when you have some teachers out there who talk about non-duality and say, oh, but it's just a matter of awakening from the illusion, of re-remembering who you are. And this can happen instantly. And then you have these teachers who say, well, I just had a spontaneous awakening. Well, yeah, maybe you had a spontaneous awakening in this lifetime because in previous lifetimes you did a lot of work to see through these dualistic illusions and all you needed was this last step and that's what happened in this lifetime. But you cannot go to the average person, even the average spiritual seeker, and say, oh, you should just awaken spontaneously. Because you can't. And when you understand duality, you understand why you can't instantly awaken to non-duality. Because what I've also explained in a lot of my other videos is that we have the subconscious mind. 
In this subconscious mind, we have created a lot of individual selves, separate selves. We create these selves when we react to things on Earth. For example, some of the terrible things that are happening, like war. You may not have experienced war in this lifetime, but look at the history. How likely is it that you could have lived for the last 2,000 years on this planet without experiencing some kind of war? So when you experience something like that that's so traumatic, the only way to deal with it is to create a subconscious self, which is based on a certain dualistic illusion. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we in a non-dual awareness today? Well, because we have all of these subconscious selves created over many lifetimes that are pulling us away from non-dual awareness, because they are pulling us into a dual awareness where we see ourselves as separated from other people, from the world, from our source. And you cannot instantly overcome these selves. It can't be done. It's impossible. It's, it's in fact, it's cruel to give people the idea that this can happen. It's simply cruel. And it's based on a, in a fundamental misunderstanding of what the spiritual path is about. The spiritual path is a gradual process because you have to overcome all of these subconscious selves, but you can only do that one at a time. Why? Because in our minds we have a need for a sense of continuity. If you all of a sudden lost all of your subconscious selves, you wouldn't know who you were. You would go through an identity crisis. You would end up in a straitjacket in a mental institution. I have incidentally met spiritual seekers who tried to do something so forcefully, either take meditation courses or use specific meditation techniques, that they ended up in a mental institution because it was too much for them. So, and I'm not saying these, these people lost all of their subconscious selves. They just lost so many that they lost their sense of continuity. So the, the real spiritual uh, teachers are not advocating this instant awakening. They are not even saying it's possible. They are, they are promoting a gradual spiritual path that takes you step by step towards higher levels of consciousness. And as I've explained in some of my other, other videos, there are basically three stages of this path, or two main ones. There is the stage where you are pulling yourself above the collective consciousness on Earth. Because when you look at Earth, you see that most people are in this dualistic state of consciousness. They see themselves as separate beings. I still remember a number of years ago, I was in Israel and I was in Jerusalem. There were some riots by the Palestinians. The riot police, the Israeli riot police came out. There was this enormous tension in the air. I ended up talking to different people. And, and I realized that the, Israeli, the Israelis are never going to make peace with the Palestinians because these two groups of people see themselves in an existential conflict. And they would simply have to rise to a higher level of identification where they didn't see themselves as separate beings. They saw that I came from a source and this person over there who grew up on the West Bank, he came from the same source. And when you start to see that we came from a common source, then you can make peace. But as long as you are down here in the duality consciousness, seeing yourself in an existential conflict with this other group of people, you can never make peace. It can't be done. You might be forced, but it's not going to be peace. So you have all of these people on Earth who are in this consciousness of separation. And they think they have a right to do whatever they want to do to other people. And as a spiritual seeker, the first stage of the spiritual path is you have to pull yourself above this because you've been affected by this in past lifetimes, you've been affected by it in this lifetime. So you have to pull yourself above the mass consciousness. And when you do this, you reach a level where you begin to go, you begin to have more of an understanding, but you also have been, uh, overcome so many of these separate selves that it becomes easier for your mind to step outside of the separate selves and experience that you are connected to your higher self. I've explained in these videos that the core of your being, the core of our being, is a certain self that I call the conscious you. And the conscious you is what gives us self-awareness. In other words, you have been watching this video, but you can instantly switch and become aware, hey, I'm sitting here in a room watching this video. And then you can mentally step back 
to where you're out in space, looking down on the planet, looking at your body, watching this video. This is the core of self-awareness. And there are some teachers that say, this is our natural state. And in a sense, yes, you could say that. But what they usually don't talk about is, what is it that pulls us out of that natural state? And it's the separate selves. So when we reduce the amount of separate selves we have in our subconscious minds, there's less of a pull on the conscious you, becomes easier for the conscious you, even for a brief second, to step outside and have a mystical experience, a non-dual experience. And when you start having these experiences, that's when you have a frame of reference. That's when you can begin to see, oh, there is a whole different way to look at life, to experience life, than what I have in my normal state of consciousness. It's, yes, you can understand that there's an alternative to duality, but until you experience it, you don't really have a frame of reference. So the less of these separate selves you have, the easier it becomes. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have a non-dual experience when you are in a lower state of consciousness and have a lot of separate selves. You can. Many spiritual people have had it, and that's what started them on the spiritual path. But the systematic path that we can walk is that we overcome these separate selves, and when we come to a certain point where we have overcome enough selves, then we really start to lock into that there's a whole different way to look at life that is non-dual as opposed to dualistic. That's what you could call the levels of Christhood, or the level of the Buddhic consciousness, or the level of non-dual awareness, or awakening, or enlightenment. But be careful here. No matter what experiences you can have, it doesn't mean you have reached the ultimate state of consciousness. Whether you call it Brahman or the Creator, you will not reach the ultimate state of consciousness as long as you are in embodiment on Earth. This is another fundamental misunderstanding that's promoted out there by some non-dual teachers. There is there's an enormous idolatry out there. Oh, Ramana Maharshi was enlightened. This person was enlightened. That person was enlightened. That person is enlightened. That teacher today is enlightened. Well, it depends on how you define enlightenment, because yes, there are certainly people who have risen to a level of consciousness but they experienced a non-dual reality. But this is not the ultimate level of consciousness. Because if you, if you have, if your consciousness goes above a certain level, you can't stay in a physical body on Earth. It's too dense of a planet. And that's why when you, you know, what the Ascended Masters are explaining, there are certain levels of consciousness that are possible on Earth. And when we reach the highest level of consciousness, which is the 144th level, I have a video that talks about 144 levels of consciousness. When you reach the highest level, the next step is that you ascend permanently from Earth. You are no longer in embodiment. You, you overcome the cycle of rebirth, the cycle of reincarnation. And you permanently ascend to the spiritual realm and become an ascended master. But even an ascended master at that level doesn't have the ultimate consciousness that the Creator has. Now, we have the potential, because we are out of the Creator's consciousness, to gradually expand our sense of self until we reach the same level of self that the Creator has. This is our potential. But as I explained in my video about how the world was created, there are levels beyond our world that were created first. And in order to reach the Creator Consciousness, we have to work our way up through those levels. And why is that? Because this gives us experiences with how the world works. What makes a world function? What prevents a world from self-destructing? And we need those experiences when we reach the Creator Consciousness, because at that point, we have the potential to create our own world. But if we had no experiences about how a world works, we would very likely create a world that would collapse. But because we have worked our way up through all of these levels, we have the experiences to become a creator who can create a world that does not fall apart, as our creator has done with ours. Because we know the world has existed for a long time. It hasn't fallen apart. 
you can say that things seem to be falling apart on Earth, but why is that? That's because our Creator has given us free will. This is essentially, uh, incidentally, something that many of these teachers of non-duality deny, that we have free will. But what they don't explain is, how did we get away from the non-dual awareness if we don't have free will? That's when you get into these you know, very convoluted intellectual explanations where you have to twist your intellect into a pretzel in order to explain that infinite awareness manifested itself at us, us, but then forgot that it's infinite awareness. But that's not the case. Infinite awareness manifested itself as us with a finite awareness that has the potential to grow through a very high number of levels until we reach the same level of consciousness as our source, as our creator. But the purpose of creating us is that we gain these experiences with what makes a world work, what doesn't. And we have free will, which means we can either stay connected beings and expand our sense of connection, or we can take a detour and go into separation and duality. This is still allowed according to free will. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. It also gives us experiences of what doesn't work, what makes a world fall apart. So we can say that um, the Earth is not really a what we can call a natural planet, because the majority of people on Earth have gone into duality. And that means instead of learning the positive experiences of what makes a world work, our only option is really to learn the negative experiences of what makes the world fall apart. And you can see that some people have to go through these extremes in order to realize, oh, this doesn't work. So a lot of the things you see on Earth that are going on on Earth really only have this one purpose to allow people to go further and further into separation until they've had enough of it and now they can't stand it anymore. They're simply saying, I can't stand this. There must be an alternative. There must be a better way that doesn't lead to this immense suffering. That's really the dynamic that's happening on Earth right now. And it doesn't mean that we can't be spiritual people on Earth, but we can only be spiritual people, as I said, by coming to understand that all of these inhumane manifestations on Earth spring from the duality consciousness. And that in order to be spiritual, we have to look at our own state of consciousness, we have to see these selves we have that are based on the dualistic illusions, and we have to overcome them. And we also have to come to the point, which I talk about in one of my videos, where we realize that in the duality consciousness, the mind becomes a closed system. You can justify anything. You can justify anything you want to do. And as a typical example of this, I've talked about it before, but look at the Crusades. You have two groups of religious people, Muslims, Christians. They both recognize the Old Testament. They both recognize the Ten Commandments. And one of these Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not kill. But they have both gotten themselves into a state of mind where they believe that not only is it justified that they kill the other group, but it's actually necessary for the unfoldment of God's purpose. The Christians believed that the uh, Muslims were destined f to uh, suffer in hell for all eternity if they didn't become Christians. And therefore it was better for them to be killed than to remain Muslims. And the Muslims had somewhat similar beliefs. So this shows you what I've called the epic mindset, where we actually, in the duality consciousness, we actually believe that Something has gone wrong with God's creation. And we have to help. We have to set things right. And how do we do it? By killing that other group of people who don't belong to our religion or our political system. Thereby, we correct God's mistake. And you go back to the statement that I started out with in the previous video. Only brown man is real. The world is an illusion. It still has this epic mindset. Somehow, the world as an illusion came into being. So, Brahman must have created this duality. Brahman must have made a mistake. But we who know this, we have to awaken everybody else so they can wake up 
and realize that the world is an illusion. And by the way, they are an illusion. Their selves is an illusion. They don't actually exist. We never really existed. So the alternative to this is what I've given you here, which comes from the Ascended Masters. The world is not an illusion. The illusion is that the world is different from Brahman or the Creator, that we are separated from the Creator, but that illusion exists only in our minds. And the real goal of spirituality, the spiritual path, the real goal of non-duality, is to overcome that illusion. But we don't overcome that illusion by looking up there to this non-dual state. We only overcome the illusion by getting down and dirty, looking at our subconscious minds, looking at the beam in our own eye, looking at our own state of consciousness. Every true spiritual teaching says the same thing. Look at your own state of mind. Overcome the illusions in your own state of mind. You will not overcome an illusion without looking at it. You will not overcome an illusion by looking up there and thinking, one day I'm going to awaken and become a non-dual being. You will only overcome an illusion by looking at it, looking at your reactionary patterns. Why do I react this way? Why did this upset me? Why do I get angry when this person says, I have to look at myself and my own illusions? If you're not willing to look at that, you're not going to make progress on the spiritual path. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how advanced you think you are because you understand this non-dual teaching. It's just an illusion. You're just, you're just really fooling yourself, deluding yourself into thinking you're spiritual. The spiritual path is not some glamorous thing where we are going towards this wonderfully non-dual state and we'll become deliriously happy. It's a down and dirty process of looking at the things that your ego does not want you to look at. Looking at the things in your own psychology that you would rather not have, but they are there, and you're not going to overcome them until you look at them. I don't care what kind of teachings people put up about this wonderful non-dual state you can suddenly shift into. It's just all nonsense. It's completely unreal. Think about it. Why aren't you in a non-dual state of consciousness? Because something pulls you out of it. Until you understand and see what pulls you away from it, you cannot go into non-duality. You cannot go beyond a certain level of consciousness. It can't be done. I know there's a very old tradition on Earth talking about this, the external path, where if you just focus on this teaching, if you become a member of this religion, if you practice these rituals, one day you will awaken. But if you really claim to be interested in non-duality, you should be smarter than the average religious person. But you can only be smarter if you realize that the outer path doesn't work. The inner path is a path of looking into your own psychology, looking at all the things that your ego is going to scream, bloody murder, don't look at this, you don't have to look at this. You can be saved without looking at this because Jesus is going to come and save you, or the Buddha, or this or that guru. It's not going to happen. The path to non-duality goes through an understanding and exposure of the dualistic elements in your consciousness, the dualistic selves. If you are not willing to look at that, just forget about non-duality. If you think you understand non-duality, but you haven't had the experience, you are worse off than if you had no experience of non-duality whatsoever.